I'll be honest with you. Typically, when a brand brings out a set of irons with the same name as their brand new driver, I am not a big fan. For example, when TaylorMade bring out an M5 driver, guess what? They bring out a set of M5 irons. And typically, I don't like them for a couple of reasons. One, I just think it's a little bit lazy. Like, you know they're going to bring out a set of irons that match the driver. And also, the following year, you pretty much know they're going to be replaced by the new named driver irons. However, this year, I'm thinking a little bit differently because TaylorMade have brought out a new set of irons which have really caught my eye. And it's the same named irons as the Stealth Driver. Now, side note, I'm not saying a set of irons that come out that match the name of the driver are bad irons. I just typically don't get very excited about testing them. Now, as you might know, TaylorMade this year brought out a TaylorMade Stealth Driver, and it's everywhere. You've seen it, the red face, carbon this, carbon that. And as soon as I heard about them bringing out a Stealth set of irons, in my head, I'd picture what they look like. I fully expect them to have a red face, to be honest. I fully expect them to be packed full of carbon and to look like they were gonna date quickly. I was wrong because when I saw them, I was pleasantly surprised. These are the brand new tailor-made stealth irons. And I've got to admit, I think they look really, really good this year. And because I like the look of them and I'm quite excited about them this time, I'm gonna give them a test. I'm gonna jump out on the golf course. I've got a five, seven, nine and pitching wedge in the bag. And these irons this year are very much aimed for the average golfer. Ultimate distance, ultimate forgiveness. Uh, they are powerful, quite strong lofted. And when I say strong lofted, the seven iron is 28 degrees. I mean, that's closer to my five iron, let's be honest. So I'm expecting these to go a long way. I'm going to play a few holes, just see how they feel, see what I think about them. Are they as good as they look? Because typically, if you're a higher handicapper and you want a forgiving set of irons, typically you get served the ugly looking golf clubs, let's be honest but these claim to be forgiving for the higher handicapper, but they look this good. That could be a winning formula. Right, I'm gonna start with the five iron, play a few holes, see how they are. Ah, um, not the best start. That might have ended up in the trees. <laughs> Let's get down there. That just goes to show, doesn't matter how forgiving a set of irons are, when you step up onto a first tee with a five iron in your hand and no practice swings, anything can happen and uh that wasn't a good golf shot at all right bad news i couldn't find it so i'm gonna have to drop one and you know what i think it's only fair let me just play i'm gonna play a few holes hit loads of shots warm up a little bit get used to these irons see what i think Okay, so I've hit plenty of warm-up shots now. Now on that last tee, I've just hit nine iron, seven iron, and five iron. First thing I'm really impressed with, they're all in a straight line down this fairway. In fact, come have a look at this. So the first golf ball is obviously nine, then we move on to the seven, and the final one down there is the five. And they're all in line with that flag. That's pretty impressive. Didn't expect to see that, but they are straight in line. Now, what I do want to test, because I hit all those three very similar to each other quality-wise. In theory, each of these golf balls, with them being two clubs apart, should roughly be 24 yards apart. Now, my biggest concern about strong lofted golf clubs is the stronger lofted clubs, i.e. the five irons, can sometimes go outrageously longer. So let's see this test. I'm gonna pace it out and see what the difference is. So this is nine iron, went a decent distance off the tee. 18 yards from nine to seven. That gap's a little bit too small. And then from seven to five iron, it's actually really good. 25 yards, that's about spot on. So that kind of makes me think, maybe the more lofted clubs are almost too strong. Like that gap between nine and seven isn't enough, but from seven to five, it's very good. 
something to be aware of because as soon as you start going strong and lofted you definitely need more lofty clubs in your bag you need more wedges right let's hit these into the green oh that looks nice get up oh not bad not bad at all maybe a fraction short okay i'm gonna have to jump on this nine iron a little bit to get it there but it's online get up to the back yeah maybe just a little bit short on that one okay pitching wedge into the green now oh, if it stays there that look, that should be good go on <laughs> that's good okay i know i'm not in absolutely loads of shots yet but i've got to say i'm impressed with the set so far they look good they do behind the golf ball they're not too ridiculously offset they don't look oversized but yeah i still feel like they're giving me a lot of forgiveness i feel like they're giving me enough protection around the ball um feel wise not the softest feel kind of come to expect that with an oversized golf club but all in all so far so good however i'm not finished testing yet because i do have a few little concerns about these clubs so before i come on to the potential negatives of these irons i want to talk price for seven irons it's 850 pounds what do you think about that price? I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Okay, so these are the three shots I just hit into the greens. This one, the last one was pretty good. I've got to say, I know the greens will be a little bit soft and receptive today. They've all spun nicely. So it doesn't give me loads of concerns that it wouldn't stop on the green. That's pretty impressive. Concern number one, short game. Now, whenever you're looking at buying a set of clubs that are stronger lofted, for distance, obviously, or forgiveness, I fear that sometimes you lose that little bit of finesse around the greens. One of the benefit of buying, let's say, a bladed iron or a forged iron or something with a little bit of cavity back with traditional lofts is you can have that little bit of flair around the green. Now with strong lofty golf clubs and certainly harder golf clubs, sometimes you lose a bit of that feel. Now a lot of higher handicappers, I would recommend to chip with like an eight or a nine iron. But with strong lofty golf clubs, they've got to be really using a pitching wedge because that is like a normal player's eight or nine iron. So I'm going to hit some shots from here just off the green with the wedge and just see how they feel. Like, do you still get that feedback that you need for little delicate shots like this? Like I say, without me knowing that was a pitching wedge behind the ball, that looks like my normal eight iron, really. But saying that on the spec, it is 43 degrees. So it's not as if it's ridiculously strong. It just looks, it looks powerful. Right, I'm going to play a little, almost like a bump and run shot with this. Go in. <laughs> well, that wasn't a bad golf shot, and it's just kept going. I thought I'd played that really nicely. Slow down! It's not too bad. I'm going to try and play this one a touch softer. Oh, sit! Come on, even softer just comes out so hot i'm really trying to play this soft and every single one is firing past the flag right i'm definitely going to try and leave this one short of the flag and then i overcompensated too much that goes exactly to my point I've said this for many years now whenever you've got strong lofts certainly with a big head size that's where I honestly feel like you do get punished. You don't get that feedback, that finesse that you sometimes need on delicate little shots. Something definitely to be aware of. And then concern number two, sometimes with more powerful irons that are very forgiving, you can hit hot shots. Sometimes I might be stood hitting into a green. I know this seven iron should go that distance and I just hit one better and it comes off faster. It might go 15 yards further. You might think, I'd love to hit the ball 15 yards further. You wouldn't do if it was out of bounds over the green or it's water over the green. Also on the flip side, these irons are designed for ultimate forgiveness. What are they gonna be like if I don't strike them well? So I've come onto a par three here, one of my favorite holes at the Marriott. I'm gonna hit five shots and whether I hit it good, bad or indifferent, in theory, I should be able to find the green pretty safely. Okay. Shot number one. That's a nice hit. Yeah, that's good. Safely aboard the green. 
That wasn't a good hit. I hit that a little bit fat. So if that gets on the green, yeah, that's done pretty well, actually. Now, one thing, this pin isn't ideal for this club. Because these irons are quite upright, they definitely have a favoritism to go left. But like I'm struggling to stop these go left. I've seen it pretty much so far in the test. Something to be aware of. If you are hitting them too far left, they might not be the club for you. That's it, nice. Similar location to the first two, I think. Yeah, again, so far so good. I can't get to this right pin though. <laughs> I'll try. So the only one I've not seen yet is when I hit it really good. Because they are middle of the green towards back of the green. I feel like if I absolutely crush one out the middle, it has got the potential of going too long. That could be that shot. That felt right in the middle. Well, I'm impressed. Okay, final shot with this seven iron. That grouping so far is pretty incredible. I hit that really well. I hit that really well. Is it gonna go big? Oh, it did. <laughs> okay, so now we're down to the green and let me evaluate these shots. These three, very, very impressed. Like, look at the line of those. I was hitting from that direction. They're all just past pin high, but these are the three I hit nicely. This one was interesting. I didn't hit this one well, I actually fatted it. And to be honest, I've not lost much distance at all. In fact, I bet it's only like two, three, four yards. That's not a lot, is it? I'm happy with that. Now the last shot, I hit better. And it has gone slightly over the back of the green. Let me just show you something here. So this is the average base, let's say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The pitch mark is at eight, and then it's kicked down. It's a missed green, yes. Boy, it would be brutal if I was to mark these irons down for a slight unfortunate kick off a good shot. I have seen irons that definitely shoot much, much longer. That's a glimpse that these irons might do that on a really, really centered strike with a bit of low spin. But overall, for the first time in a long time, I think these irons, the stealth irons that match up with the driver of the year, are some of the best irons TaylorMade have brought out in this category. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned, lots more to come. We'll see you soon.